This is Health Broadcasting Service, HBS Radios, your global pioneers in specialist radio broadcasting, bringing you everything to enhance your health and well-being. Health is your human right. HBS, your partners in everything about your health and well-being. HBS Radio is who you're looking for. Weekly news update. Coming to you from the Health Broadcasting Service, HBS Radio Channel. Red Cross agencies appealed on Tuesday for 250 million Swiss francs, the equivalent of $273 million, to provide food, water and shelter to millions of people in Ukraine, where the humanitarian situation is deteriorating rapidly, and to those who have fled abroad. The International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, and the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, the world's largest disaster relief network, issued the joint appeal as a huge Russian armored column bore down on Kiev, six days after Moscow's invasion began. We need the funds in order to address the humanitarian needs which are already staggering food, water, shelter, health care, psychological support, and they are growing by the hour, Martin Schuepp. ICRC Regional Director for Europe and Central Asia, told a news briefing. A priority was to reach people detained during the conflict and the ICRC is in touch with all sides regarding visits to detainees, he said. All sides have an obligation to facilitate the return of dead bodies, and ICRC teams are ready to help but remain limited in their movement due to insecurity, he added. One dollar as at the time of this report equals 0.9152 Swiss francs. In another report, Hong Kong mortuaries hit capacity. Facilities for storing dead bodies at hospitals and public mortuaries in Hong Kong are at maximum capacity due to a record number of COVID-19 fatalities, the hospital authority said on Monday, as officials battle to control a surge in cases. The Global Financial Hub reported a daily record high of 34,466 new coronavirus infections and 87 deaths on Monday, health authorities said. Separately, the city's education secretary said international schools could maintain their original term dates, after widespread confusion over summer school holidays. The rapid spread of cases in Hong Kong has put the plight of domestic helpers in the spotlight after some were fired or made homeless by their employers when they tested positive for coronavirus. Hong Kong has around 340,000 domestic helpers, most hailing from either the Philippines or Indonesia. Many families in the city depend on live-in helpers for housekeeping and to look after the elderly and children, with the minimum wage set at 4,630 Hong Kong dollars, the equivalent of which is $593 per month. Next, South Korea rolls back COVID-19 vaccine pass. South Korea will temporarily lift a requirement for vaccine passes or negative COVID-19 tests at a number of businesses to ease the strain on testing centers, authorities said on Monday, as the country faces a wave of Omicron infections. The move will allow public testing and health facilities to devote more resources to battling the wave of new cases. Interior Minister John Hatchiol told a COVID-19 response meeting. China perseveres with mRNA COVID shot development. China has spent over a year developing Pfizer-type COVID-19 vaccines that may even help it pivot from stringent, zero-COVID, restrictions, but a changed market and the Omicron variant have muddied prospects before efficacy data has even been published. Still, China is unlikely to join the majority of countries in approving foreign-made vaccines based on messenger RNA technology before making its own, experts said, though a slowing vaccination drive at home and in some other nations an improved supply of approved vaccines have raised questions of viability. And finally in this new segment, the question has arisen if his aim to vaccinate 70% of world by June is still realistic. Vaccinating 70% of the population in every country in the world against COVID-19 by mid-2022 has been the World Health Organization's rallying cry to end the pandemic. But recently, public health experts say that while boosting immunity globally remains essential, 
the figure is neither achievable nor meaningful. Read more. New York will end statewide school mask mandate on March 2. New York State will end its mask mandate for schools and child care facilities on Wednesday, Governor Kathy Hochul said, citing a steep drop in COVID-19 cases. It wasn't always easy, but students, educators and parents stepped up to fight this pandemic, Hochul tweeted on Sunday. We've reached this exciting milestone because of your hard work. The new rules come after the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on Friday eased guidelines for indoor masking across most of the country. And that is all we have for you currently on this segment. We will be back with more updates as news develop. Engage with us on our social media Facebook and Instagram platforms at Health Broadcast. You can also visit our website at www w.healthbroadcastingservice.com. Remember to press the subscribe button to stay abreast of vital, interesting, and authentic health news from across the globe, brought to you by the Health Broadcasting Service HBS Radio Live YouTube channel. Please stay safe and remain healthy. And bye for now. You've been watching the Health Broadcasting Service YouTube channel. Your channel of excellence and distinction. Pioneering specialist radio broadcasting. Giving you the best experience. Subscribe to our channel.